uh, warm up. I'm gonna say, so I pronounce swiping and then you guys will yell it back at me, okay? Just to really get us awake for the Sunday morning. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're like, I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay. Swiper, no swiping! 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 But we did have some great meals here in Cleveland. Ooh. We went to um, two restaurants. The first time we went to Cordelia's. Oh, it's like on course. Yeah, which like delicious. That's where we were told a lot of the great restaurants are. Mm -hmm. um, and then we went to this other restaurant, Dante, last night, which yeah. is really good too. Awesome. I'm glad you guys experienced yeah. at least a little bit yeah. of our city. I do want to come back though and do like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and, and oh, maybe skip yeah. games on there. Oh, so the science good. center, the natural history yeah. museum. There's oh, so much yeah. to see awesome. for real. And I think people. I always say people forget what's in their own backyard. Yeah. And we okay. here in Cleveland, our food scene is just growing and growing, yeah. which is amazing. Awesome. Um, because we get a little bit of everything yeah. you know, around here, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. 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 I'll need a map for sure when I come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah. At least you have one in your phone. Yes. It's yes. like the best yes. map you could ever it's have. True. You will yeah. never, like, as long as you have service, you'll never get for lost. Sure. <laughs> How long have you been doing the convention circuit? So I actually just started um, last year in April. Uh, well, end of March, uh, beginning of April. So it's been like a year of traveling and meeting so many people like yourself. And I had no idea this world existed. And it's so cool. I'm so happy I know about it now because like the people are awesome. You guys are awesome. I love seeing everyone like committed to like their cosplays and like committed to the characters that they love. Yeah. And everyone does it, so it's like you don't feel weird. Yeah. I just do it because everyone just loves each other. That's exactly yeah. what I say. It's like a melting pot. Yeah. Because really you cool. have jocks out there, you have yeah. nerdy people out there, yeah. and everybody kind of comes together yeah, here. Like all the fandoms. Yes. And like everything feels awkward. Yeah. And then you come here and kind of feel accepted, which yeah. is awesome. I love it. Like, so I do love that. Yeah. Well, have you gotten any amazing um, little fan art or anything for people yeah. since you've been at conventions? I you have, for sure. Collection now. People, um, I had one, uh, he was really cute. He he came up to my table and he's like, yeah, I just want to give you something that I drew, you know, for, I love all the episodes. And he was just like, he could remember everything. So he was just like spitting all of these lines from all these episodes. And I'm like expecting like one sheet of art, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, hold on a second. He puts his bag down and then he lifts up literally like a pile <laughs> this big. Wait a ton. Of artwork. Oh my of god. Artwork. And each page it was like the map and it was from like each episode. Wow. So there was an art piece from of like the map of like the three places that Dora went. Mm -hmm. And then there was an artwork piece of just Dora <laughs> in that episode. I love that. I was like, this is incredible. I was like, do you want to give me this? Like, are you sure you don't want to keep it? He's like, no, no, I made this for you. I was like, wow, that's amazing. I feel like it's it like your life work. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was so good. I love it. I still have it at home, yeah, for sure. <laughs> What's the most memorable interaction that you've had with somebody that really touched you and you will never forget that moment? Yes, I tell this one, one moment so many times because it's so special. Um, I met this family back in Philly uh, I believe it was Philly or Boston? Philly. Philly. Uh, it was a family of three, a mom, a brother, well, her two uh, kids. It was a boy and a girl. And, you know, I talked to them about how much they loved Dora, all of, all of the things. And then I'm like, well, I want to do the Dora voice for you. And as some of you may know, I ask you to close your eyes. So I asked all three of them. I was like, please close your eyes. And usually I'll say something like, hi, I'm Dora, or swipe or no swiping. But at that moment, I was like, well, let me sing a song. So I started singing, Bate, bate, chocolate. And I sang the whole thing. But after like that first line, all three of them, tears started coming down their eyes. And I'm looking at them. And I'm like, I don't know, should I stop singing? Like, I don't know what to do. But I just finished the song. And they opened their eyes. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't mean to make you cry. 
And the son, he was like, no, it's okay. Like, we just lost our grandmother a month ago, and we used to sing that song all the time with her. So it just brought them back, you know, for those moments with their grandma. And, like, that touches me so much because it's those it moments, right? Yeah. Right that you connect um, through a show because you're watching it with someone else. Mm -hmm. And, like, those memories will never leave you. Like, of you singing it, like, with your brother or your sister or a yes. family member. And then now, telling that story, at the time, my grandma, my grandma was still alive, and now she has, she passed two months ago. So now telling that story, and I feel, you know, that connection to, like, your grandmother, is yeah. just, it's just so beautiful. So I always love that story, and I hope they hear me telling you. I don't know what you are now, but. And so great that you can create, the, you kind of yeah. create those memories for them. And I was like, because pictures and, you know, all this stuff disappears, goes away over time, but the memories last your whole life, you know, For so sure, that's yeah. so special. Yeah. You've been doing Dora since, you you started at seven, I believe. Yes. And pretty much grew up with Dora. Yeah. What was a lesson that you took away while you're voicing the show and go, hmm, I, I should do that. Am I yeah. every, as a young person even, I'm sure you're learning lessons throughout. Yes. Asking for help. Uh, I can be very stubborn at times, as my husband can attest. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, and I always, you know, even like the men in my family, like my dad, my brother, I would always see them like kind of struggling, like growing up. I'm like, why don't you just ask someone? Just ask someone like where it is, or like and they're like, no, I got it. And I'm like, it's fine. Like it's okay to ask for help. So like those little that specifically, I always think of that um, in my life that it's okay to ask for help, even if it's for a small thing of like where is this restaurant or where is this street. Even if you yeah. have your phone, sometimes the service or whatever it stops working when yeah. you need it the most, right? Mm -hmm. So like, and in any case, if you need help for whatever reason, I think it's always okay to reach out to someone, whether it's a family member, a friend, or someone who's just specializes in the thing and if you need help, it's okay to, to ask for that. Yeah, no, it, those are even great lessons for adults, yeah. not just for children, but yeah. for adults mm -hmm. to learn as they grow up. Because Dora came out when I was in high school, so it was something that I would go babysit and throw Dora on, because I was like, oh, Dora's great. She's Latina, so I'm like, yeah. you know, I only know a little bit of Spanish. I can learn some Spanish from Dora, and I'm also entertaining children, and it is such an easy, lighthearted show. I really have been singing the theme song all weekend, and my daughter was like, please stop, and I was like, but it's like, Dora, I was like, it's just even the theme song. Oh, you have a great voice. It just gets you so hyped. I feel like I get so hyped up listening to it. So, um, such a great experience, I think, for you to grow up through that show. What was your everyday life, everyday life like? Yeah, it, going through that because high school, I'm sure you were yes. kind of in that same age range. Right? Yeah, so it definitely changed and grew. When I first started, we worked on the pilot for a little. There were a lot of late nights, of kind of like in the studio recording. Once the show got picked up, there was more of like a schedule, and I would record like full days, three times a week, and I would have a on-site tutor. So I would bring work from school for my teachers, and then we would kind of, you know, be taught between sessions. And then after a while, I kind of, you know, you know the character, and I would just go after school. Sometimes I would leave school a little early, but then I would record after school, and I would be by myself. Sometimes I wouldn't even have like a director in with me, just a sound engineer, but that person like would know me and her, has known me for so long, so they would just help me. But um, yeah, it was really cool. Like for a long time, it was just me. Like even in high school, like I would go and just record. Um, yeah, it's like really crazy to think about because I'm also from New York. We recorded in New York. And I wasn't really connected to, like, you know, LA is like everyone is over there. And I felt like I didn't know any other voice actors or yeah. really any other actors. So it's cool now doing the cons because then I meet so many other voice actors who are also like on Nickelodeon shows, like Tara Strong was Timmy yeah. Turner. And like now I have a relationship with these people. I'm like, this is so cool. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm like a part of like a cool little family that I didn't feel like before. So, um, 
Well, yeah, it's really special. You definitely are. Did, while you were doing that, because you were young, yeah. were you ever thinking about your future? Or what if Dora ends? What will I do? I, as young people, most of the time, we don't think about the future. You're just living in the present and the now. And I'm always trying to get my daughter, like, what do you want to do with your life? What do you, you know, at least have the idea. Were you also thinking, what do I want to do? Do I want to keep voice acting? I know you've done dancing, singing. So what, what was that for you? Yeah, I, I love this question because you know, we knew at some point, like sometimes it feels like when you're doing like a character for so long, like it's just gonna keep going forever. But we knew, you know, they love like a kid's cast and we were all growing up. We were all like around 17, 18 at the time. We knew it was gonna end at some point, but we just didn't know. And I was graduating from high school when we found out they were gonna recast. And I remember not being so upset about it because I think in high school, you know, you're trying to build friendships, but then you're also trying to figure out your place in the world. And I struggled with that. Like, I didn't know. I was balancing school, figuring out if, you know, friends and people liked me and people didn't like me. <laughs> and then also working at the same time, like after school and doing all these things. And back then, voice acting wasn't like, you know, you weren't an on-screen actor. You're just like, you know, people didn't really like care that much. Yeah. So, like, it wasn't cool. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of struggled with that balance. So I think once I knew they were recasting, I was sad, of course, because something was coming to an end. But I was also kind of happy to see who I was outside of the show. I mean, I was you know, part of the show for so long, from seven to like 18 years old. And I wanted, you know, I didn't want to just be Dora. I love Dora. But who is Kathleen? What does she want to do? Do I want to be an on-screen actor? Do I want to do voice acting? Do I want to do something completely different? Like, do I want to get married someday? Do I, you know, all of those questions, I had no idea. Um, so, yeah, that's awesome. If you guys have any questions, I just want you to know there is a mic right here. By all means, you can step up to the mic, ask whatever you would like. I can't guarantee that Kathleen won't answer it, but <laughs> you can at least ask. Yeah. But I'll, I'll transition that part to say, um, so I went to college, tried to do on screen acting, TV acting, didn't really like land the roles that I was imagining. Um, lost some passion for it, so I decided to, well, I didn't really decide. I kind of fell into a role of uh, design. I was an assistant, executive assistant for people that were design um, executives and kind of found and learned my way into becoming a design manager and a project manager for interior you. design. Um, and I was really good at it. I really enjoyed it. Um, I was doing that up until a year ago. And once I got the opportunity, so Dora is back. She has a reboot. It's, it came out on Friday on Paramount Plus. Yes. Um, and two years ago, I found out that I was a, I was gonna be a part of it, so I'm back now as Dora's mom, which is so crazy. But I did wanna just add, so when I got the audition, I was like in complete shock, I had no idea. I was like, Dora's coming back, but that's so crazy. <laughs> and then I could probably be Dora's mom, it was, it was so surreal. Mm -hmm. And when I got it, I you know I freaked out, I did the whole thing, and then I, I really thought about it, because I found out at work. Uh, nobody knew anything, and I was like, is this something, I know these opportunities don't come often for people, I know how the industry is, I know, you know, people work hard and for these moments, and I didn't want to take it lightly, and I really thought to myself, is this something, I just want to do this one role, do I want to pursue voice acting again, or acting, whatever it is, and I took some time, I thought about it, I'm married now, so I also have to talk to my husband about it, <laughs> um, and I was like, no, I think I want to try. Because if you try and it doesn't work out, then that's fine. You know, mm -hmm. you can just do something else. And I was like, no, I really want to try 100% voiceover, voice acting. And I love animation. I've always loved animation. And I'm the type of person where, like, I can't do everything. Otherwise, I'll just stress and fall on the floor and just be, I can't do anything. So <laughs> I was like, I think I might have to quit my job. So last year, I quit my corporate job. Decided to do voice acting full time, 
And people around me kind of didn't really understand because I couldn't really tell them either that I was a part of a new show at the time. So they're like, okay, you're just quite good. Yeah. You're like, I can't say anything. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm just doing just my job. And they're like, start okay. something new but the same. Yeah, and I was doing the concert gig. So I was like, yeah, I'm just traveling a lot. You know, I just, I'll see what I'll do next year. So, but then when I started, when I was able to tell people kind of like, you know, I'm back, and they're like, oh, okay, because. We didn't really understand why you quit your job, but like now we get it. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I'm excited to be back on the show. Um, and I love that I'm back as her mom. I feel like I can channel all the love that I have for Dora and my past and put that into a new character and just support the show and support the new voice actor. Her name is Diana. She is amazing. She's the cutest little thing. And I just, I'm so happy that she gets to take this and continue the legacy and like I'm so excited to see like where where she goes and you know what she does with the character and the show. I'm excited to be a part of it, but I'm also excited to see what my next adventure is too. So there is a clip because I got I want you guys to see me as mommy now. So we're just gonna play a quick little clip. You guys can play it. Like, I'm obs mine would probably be like that bath bomb or 
feeling of mystery jewelry. I'm, oh, I'm wow. obsessed with those, finding <laughs> the pearls and the oysters and that kind of thing. Okay. You can probably yeah, find yeah. in my feed. Maybe some mini verse toys. I'm obsessed with them. What would we maybe find in your feed? What are you watching on TikTok? Well, because I post a lot of Dora related content. <laughs> I get a lot of the Dora like impersonators and the people who like just create these, you know, parodies of Dora, which I find really fun. <laughs> uh, so that's always great. I do love like the food side of TikTok and learning new recipes and like trying all of these different things. Little hacks. Yeah, little hacks. <laughs> I love like the like the uh, the packing. Like all the ASMR and like oh, the packing and like all the, the reorganizing of like your refrigerator. I love I all of those too. It's just so satisfying to watch. Yeah. Um, what else do I have on there? Um, oh, and a lot of um, animal, like I, like the animals, like I love pandas Ooh. and seals and otters. I've been talking about <laughs> those types of animals with a group of friends. So that's just always popping up on my For You page and it's really funny and I love it. So. <laughs> Who has influenced you the most in your life? Um, Career-wise or my life? The life In your life. Personal. Yeah, because I feel like somebody can always inspire you too through your career. Yeah. That that one moment can inspire you for the rest of your life in all branches of your life. Um, I would say my mom, only because, I mean for a lot of reasons, because she, you know, well, she's my mom. Um, but she was an immigrant from Peru. She came in her late teens. And she was 24 when she had me. So when she kind of brought me into this business, she was in her late 20s and not knowing anything, just kind of trying to figure out, you know, this new country. And she guided me throughout the whole thing. And now as an adult and I'm in it kind of by myself, I feel like I don't really know anything because my mom kind of handled a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. But the industry, it's like so no one really teaches you or guides you. And I just look at my mom now so differently for someone who didn't really know much but was able to kind of like go through and make like amazing relationships with people and kind of still have them now in such a graceful way. I just, I really love that about her. And even now, like I'm back in the business and back on the show and everyone asks me, they're like, oh my gosh, how's your mom? Like we love her and like all of these things. Like and I tell her, she's like, oh my God, I love that. Um, so I just really uh, appreciate how, like, I love my mom's character, and I love that she loves me so much and she cares about me. I don't know, I just, I appreciate yeah. her a lot. Yeah, and she did a lot of stuff for me, traveled with me, you know, made sure, you know, I was my best in what I wanted to do. Yeah, I, this, I, my daughter, she's sitting over there yeah. in the corner. Uh, this <laughs> who I always feel like I'm like, I'm your mom, I'll always be there for you to support you. There's somebody you can lean on. For the most part, most families. I mean, nowadays you really don't know what it's like in people's households, yeah. but your mom is really the person that yeah. that's going to be your rock. That'll yeah. always be there for you. Will lift you up when you're yeah. down, or will push you forward and challenge you. Yeah. And sometimes we might, you know, be a little too mom, or like I, I go, look, I know that we're at con, and she's going to be 16. So I said, you know, you can walk around. But just don't leave the convention center. Don't leave. Nobody has a puppy outside. There's no candy for you over there. She's like, why would I go anywhere? I just have to say it because I'm a mom and I'm protective. Yeah. Uh, do you ever feel protective over Dora? Well, it's so funny. Uh, like we're talking about moms, and I'm like, wait, like I'm not a mom in real life, but like I'm an animated mom now, mm -hmm. and like yeah. this is technically kind of now my daughter now. So it's funny because I do try to channel all of that. And I think about my mom and the women in my life who have, you know, guided me and supported me. And that's what I kind of feel like I'm doing for Dora, Dora, the show, but also like little Kathleen that's still yeah. living inside of me. I'm kind of just like <laughs> leaving her now, which is really deep and like also sad and emotional, but really fun and happy. <laughs> Yeah, I feel I do feel protective over Dora. I love Dora, and now I see her in a different light, a different way through like an adult lens. You know, sometimes when you're younger, you, you know, you don't really think of things that way, especially when your parents tell you like, "No, just trust me." And you're like, "No, you don't know anything." Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And then when you get older, you're like, "Oh, my mom was like, right." I get it. Mm -hmm. So like all of those things, like I look back at my life and my time with Dora and. You know, I, I see it differently, and I have a, a greater appreciation for it. Yeah, that's awesome. So.
Hi. Hello. Um, my name is Vega. I grew up on Dora. I don't need to tell you the number of stories I have, force them to watch it, go to everything. <laughs> um, I made up like an imaginary friend who was based off of, uh, it was like a monkey. Oh, and then, <laughs> yeah. And, and I would pretend that monkey was following me around everywhere, like on all our trips. I was like, yeah, like yellow monkeys in the corner watching us. Oh. I forced all my family members to like have their own like pink monkey and blue monkey and stuff. Oh. It was all based on foods. <laughs> Um, but my question for you yes. is, what's your memory from recording for Dora, or right now as her mom? Yeah. Um, so now, so it's funny, I recorded for the first time probably like a year and a half ago, and I remember walking into the booth, putting the headphones on, like, and took a break, and I was like, I felt so like safe and comfortable and like so many memories started flooding back and I was like wow like I miss this I miss this moment I miss like just doing this and to feel that I was like I'm really here like I'm doing it and I decided that I'm going to keep doing it it was amazing I didn't even have words and then I just I don't know I got so excited and I, it reminded me how much love I have for the show for voice acting for animation and at some moment, I don't, I don't think I'll ever forget. Thank you. It was like you were meant to be there. Yeah. You know. Thank you. Hello. Hi, Samantha. Oh, she needs <laughs> support. Yeah, she needs no support. support. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Okay. My question is, if Bluey came out when Dora first came out, what would you think the crossover would be between Bluey and Dora? Oh my goodness. I love Bluey. I think they're so fun. I just, it's so funny you said that because this morning I saw that uh, Bluey is at FAO Schwartz for a month in New York in the city. So I sent it to my sister-in-law to so we could take our niece because I just love them. They're so fun. That crossover would be crazy. It could happen now. Dora's back. So the mom, I can be with the parents, Bluey's parents, like hanging out. Yeah. I think we would probably just put on like a huge play. Like I know they love to play and make their like scenes and scenarios and have different accents. I think if like Dora and her family kind of joined in on that, that'd be really fun. It needs to happen. Yeah, I think so too. If you're listening, anyone on YouTube, tell them. Let's get on there. Yeah, crossover. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you ever, do you ever feel the pressure to keep the integrity of Dora in your own personal life because you represent her? And obviously she's such a wholesome, you know, child family driven character. Do you feel that, that pressure at all? Um, I did feel that pressure as Latina and not feeling Latina enough. Mm -hmm. And I know you said something earlier that, um, that made me think of that again. And I, you know, I come from parents who are from Peru. I am Peruvian, and my parents decided to speak to me only in English growing up, and I would speak in Spanish with my grandparents uh, because my older brother, they only spoke to him in Spanish, but he struggled a lot in school, and they didn't really want that for me. So that's why they decided to do that. And my Spanish isn't, you know, as fluent or as perfect as it can be. Like I don't have an accent. And, you know, all of these things. And I did have people in my life who would tell me like, oh, you're not really Latina then. And, you know, as a kid, I'm like, oh, you know, what do you really say? But then I get that now as an adult too sometimes. And it really bothers me because it doesn't, it doesn't make me any less Latina that I'm not fully fluent. It's yeah. like, do you tell that to everyone else who's not fluent, you know, in their native yeah. family? No. So, and I, I feel that within our own community sometimes, and not all the time, I've met a lot of great, of great people, uh, Hispanic people, but instead of like separating people who are not extremely fluent, why don't we just embrace them and we can all lift each other up, and then maybe they'll want to learn and be fluent in Spanish, because yeah. if you're just being them no, out all the time, it's like, oh, well, then I don't want to speak it now. It does, and I have family members too. I have a cousin who like really gets like torn down about that when people tell her that. Cause she does, you know, she can carry a conversation and she would speak to my grandmother, my grandmother who passed all the time. She would call her and have all these conversations. So for someone to, you know, tell her like, oh, your, your Spanish isn't good enough. And that's something that she holds because she has a connection with that with my, our grandmother. Yeah. It hurts her like so much. Like she gets really emotional about it. 
So I like to talk about that because I think people are having those conversations now, but I think we need to have more conversations about that. Um, and I think it's great to be bilingual. I do think that that's a plus. I think it's amazing. I think it does help in, in many ways. But I think there, there has to be a better way to kind of bring us all together and not alienate each other because of that. Yeah, no, I uh, kind of the same. My mom, grandma, and aunt were all single mothers who raised five of us little cousins running around, and they would use Spanish as their secret language. So, and I, we could pick up on some yeah. things, but we never actually got to be fluent in it because they didn't speak to us in Spanish. I grew up in a very white neighborhood, and I was the only Puerto Rican around, so it was kind of a weird transition for me because I grew up with white people. And when people talk to me, they think I'm white sometimes. Right. And then they're like, you're Italian or something. And I'm like, no, I'm Puerto Rican. But because I don't speak Spanish, that that kind of, they're like, oh, but do you speak Spanish? And they're like, I don't have to speak Spanish to make me Puerto Rican. I'm still Puerto Rican yeah. inside. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I totally understand. And it's, it's like stories like that. Like, and we all come from somewhere. We, it's a, there's a reason why we are who we are. And instead of leading with that, like, oh, OK. Well, what was your upbringing like? Or like, yeah. you know, like try to find out who the person is instead of, you know, reporting to the other way. I don't know. Yes. And I think that's that's so like your story makes like I see you oh, different. Right. Like, I can see you more now who you are. Well, I can yell at people awesome. like, guys, <laughs> you know, like I can say some things like, yeah. Yeah, but mija. you know, like those are the things that we definitely yeah. learned because they yeah. were said often yeah. in our house. <laughs> I love that, and that's why I love talking about that to hear, you know, your your story and kind of your experience. And I think a lot of, you know, when I was younger, I'm first generation, you know, American, uh, Peruvian American here. And I think, you know, there's second generation, there's third generations now. We, we, you know, we've had a lot of people migrate over to the US and now we've created families and they're growing. And a lot of us now are either multicultural, we yeah. all just come from one place. Um, and some of us maybe don't speak Spanish or we don't know it. Um, so I think it's important just to talk about that and kind of get to know, to know who, who, we, who we are. Oh yeah, my family came from Puerto Rico to New York, and then from New York to Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't live with any regrets yeah. ever in my life because I feel like those decisions make me who I am today. But what advice would you give to your younger self now? What would you say? Or would you say yeah. something like, you're doing great, keep going, because we're gonna make it in the long run, yeah. just keep working hard. You know, it's funny because I did, I struggled a lot with that because I played a huge Latina character who was groundbreaking for, you know, the, the whole community, for the world even, and I sometimes didn't feel like I was good enough to play her, you know? Um, sorry, her English film. But I, I was, and I just wanted to tell her that, like, you are Latina enough, and you were enough to play for us. Yeah, I mean, you're great. No, I love it. I was like, I swear, I told my daughter, I go, I'm on edge all weekend with tears. I go, I'm filled with emotions for some reason. I was like, it's because I'm here. I was like, and everything that I think about too, me sitting next to you, that I'm like, oh, it's just, it brings so much emotion to my surface as well of this, you just doing a good job, you keep going forward, don't look back, you know? Yeah, because I know how important she is. I yeah. know how much she means to so many. And I know it more now because I meet people like you guys who tell me how important she is. Yeah. And even small meeting you. <laughs> like, and I have people who come up to me and say, Dora was the only person that looked like me. And I wanted to be her. I wanted to have her haircut. I wanted to dress like her. I wanted to go to school like her. Mm -hmm. and, and in that sense, I did have, I put up, I, I knew that. And I just wanted to do it justice. I wanted to. Is it great seeing people cosplay too as Dora yeah, now as an adult? It. And you can look around and there's big Doras. They're not even little kids, like adult Doras walking I around at the show. It's so cute. And with their little backpacks, um, I love it. I had a family once who, um, they came out like Dora, Diego, Swiper. It was like the whole gang. It was really, really fun. And I love it because it's so, it's so cool. Has anyone shown you any tattoos or anything? Yes, I kind of do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot online too. Some of them are a little scary, but <laughs> but um, no, 
know, I love it. I, it's so funny because it, it was so easy to make fun of Dora, especially like in, earlier on. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it's probably like because of me, because of the way I said things or like the pauses and like all of these things. So I, I, I do. I find it funny and I, I love it. I love that people love her in every, in every type of way. Yeah. Are you, I, you're still singing? Are you yeah, 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 so yeah thank you. I was like, are you still dancing? Do you still no, practice I can't dance. dance at all? No, no, no I practiced it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it didn't go anywhere. No, no. <laughs> my husband can, can tell you that, no. so I cannot dance. She got the Elaine going on. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's not worth it, yeah. Shoulders. Yeah. So, um, I like to think I try. And when I try, I just like, you know, you just got to give it your all. And then whatever you look like, you look like, you know. Yeah. So, just have fun with just it. Have fun. Yeah. Just have your dreams. Yeah. I just you know, your life. You probably will never see me do like a TikTok dance. Like I try <laughs> and I'll watch it. I'll be like, no. <laughs> I've tried a few times. I'm like, no, you still have no. Absolutely not. So, you'll never see me do one at all. I try to. Yeah. I try. <laughs> no. No. My dog. Maybe we should my do dog it together. together. I'm like, no, no. Don't post that. <laughs> don't do that. That's right. You guys are Latina. You got it. You got it. Yeah, I love that. I love scary movies. Right? So, yeah. 
Well, whatever path the path takes you, I think that you're going to flourish no matter what. You're so fabulous. Thank you so much for being here, Kathleen. Can you give it up for Kathleen? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>